Kia ora guys and welcome back to my wee channel. Now every now and then I like to look on local auction sites, see if I can pick up a little bargain. So the other day I clicked on, typed in a few different camera brands, camera names, this popped up. Look at that, an Asahi Pentax Spotmatic F. Beautiful little camera and it was about five minutes from finishing the auction. No bids on it, $50 reserve met. Oh, so I, uh, so I managed to get it for 50 New Zealand dollars. Body only, but I've got a small collection of uh, Super Takamai lenses. I couldn't resist the custom lime green leatherette, and it matches my favourite sofa at home. Now I am a little bit of a uh, Spotmatic fan. I've got three Spotmatics. I've got two of the originals, and I've got one Spotmatic SP2 in black, which is oh, beautiful camera. This one, I have never ever had a green Spotmatic. Never. Why would I? Saying that, I had a spotty green one. A long time ago as a teenager but that was a completely different thing and of course the tablets fixed that so pff, forget about it forget about it so a little bit of information about the spotmatic f it was the last in the spotmatic range it was released in 1973 and was superseded two years later in 1975 by the pentax k mount range which used a bayonet lens mount instead of the m42 like a thread mount or screw mount lenses that are on the spotmatic range it's a fully mechanical camera Aside from the light meter, the onboard light meter, which requires a couple of uh, couple of old Mercury batteries, which I don't have, you can get a workaround for it. I won't bother getting any batteries for it. I'll just use it with a handheld meter and set everything manually. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a really quick look around the camera, just show you some of the key features, the ones that I'm going to be using anyway, and then after that, we're going to load a roll of film, spend the next week or so shooting a few photographs. I'm going to aim mainly for people pictures, put them on here at the end, and uh, see and see what you think. I mean, seriously, for 50 New Zealand dollars, that's what, I don't know, 24, 25 quid English? Ha, <laughs> it's an absolute giveaway, what a bargain. So starting on the front of the camera, you've got a self-timer switch. Now, unfortunately, my self-timer switch is jammed. It's going nowhere, but in a fully operational model, you would cock your shutter, pull down the self-timer lever, as far as it will go, and then press this little silver button there, and that would sort of time down and fire off your shutter as and when ready. Unfortunately, this one is buggered. On this side of the camera, you've got two flash sync ports. You've got your light meter switch. Uh, but like I say, we've got no batteries, so I'm not even gonna worry about that one. You've got the back door, you've got the viewfinder. To open the back door, lift your film rewind crank, pop it up, and it opens the door like so. On the bottom plate, you've got a battery compartment. Like I said, we've got no batteries, so uh, forget about that. You've got a standard tripod mount there, and then you've got a rewind knob here. So when you want to rewind your film, you depress that button, then you start rewinding with the rewind crank. And when you're rewinding, you can see that red dot rotating in the button there. And then as you approach the end of the film, that spot will stop rotating. Then you can stop rewinding, and that will leave a section of the film leader exposed in the back of the camera. It will make it far easier to load the film roll onto the dev tank spiral. On the top plate, you've got a film rewind crank. That does what normal rewind cranks do. Underneath that, you've got a couple of indication dials. And basically these make no difference whatsoever to the operation of the camera. They're just reminders of what film you've got in, what speed film you've got in, and how many exposures you've got on that film. You've got a flash hot shoe, obviously in the center. This is your shutter speed dial. And that goes from one second to one thousandth of a second. It's got a bulb mode for long exposure photography and flash synchronization is at 1 60th of a second and that is indicated by the red cross. You can lift this out of color, spin it round to select your desired film ISO speed. Like I said, we've got no batteries, we've got no meter working, which means I don't have to worry about that. I will set my ISO on the handheld meter and take my readings accordingly. Now my film advanced lever is a little bit patchy on returning to base. It gets there, but it's a little bit patchy. On that, she's pretty good. There, you've got your film counter. So every time you cock your shutter, that will advance a frame. And then when you take the film out, open the back door, that will reset that back to zero. Here is your shutter release button, and it's got a very convenient little locking system. So there's no misfiring. And basically you turn the lock button until you can see the red L and then you cannot depress the shutter, which is pretty handy actually. Put it back when you're ready to fire and the shutter will fire every time. We're gonna check the film curtains are operating as they should. 
So I'll just open the back door and then when I fire the shutter, the shutter curtains open and do their thing. So that's working okay. We're also gonna spin the camera around just to make sure that the mirror is lifting. And it is. So, operationally, this camera should be pretty good. I'm just gonna mount a lens onto this camera, which you do like so. And because the camera is lime green, let's use a roll of Rolleye RPX 100, which has also got like a sort of lime green logo. And that was totally not planned. It's just, the, <laughs> it's the only roll I've got left. So anyway, let's just get that out of the box ready. So you open the back door, insert your film, put the locking pin down, drag the film across, look for a suitable slot, start winding on nice and steady, making sure the film is between the two guide rails. And that's working a treat. We're just gonna close the back up, fire that one. We're gonna advance the film one more time, making sure the rewind knob is turning. And that is turning quite nicely. That will do. That is now charged, ready to fire. I'm gonna put the lock on so there's no accidentals going off. And uh, that camera now is ready to rock and roll. So here we are, about two weeks later. It's taken me that time to rattle off the roll of 36. I developed the film last night in Kodak D76. And I'm really happy with the results. That was a roll of 36. I managed to get 34 frames. Two frames I lost because I didn't <laughs> I didn't lock the shutter on the camera. So uh, they were wasted, unfortunately. But that's just the way it is. Some are a bit crap. Some are just thoughtless. Some are quite nice. The focusing I found a little bit tricky at times using the micro prism focusing on the Spotmatic F as opposed to the more advantageous split prism focusing, which I find a lot easier on other cameras. I did use zone focusing at times on the camera, which, which proved to be okay. I can't really say too much wrong about this camera. For the price, $50 and a bit of delivery, I mean, come on, eh? Go out and get yourself a Spotmatic F. I'm sure you're gonna enjoy it. All right, guys, until next time, get yourself a Spotty F. See ya. Thank you.